Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Um, I had some requests for this video and since it's time for a string change anyway, I'm gonna take you through it. Now this is what, how you would do a string change on a flat head dulcimer versus the scroll head, which is the other video I did. I'll put that somewhere up here for you to look at. If you have the scroll head, it walks through step-by-step step how to change your strings. All right, so this is the flat head one, okay? So there's a couple of things we need. First, you need some sort of nips, okay? Just any kind of little nippy things to cut your string. John got me some of these um, as a gift and they really are nice because you know, I have a lot of instruments to be changing strings on. Um, they're very sharp, but the cool part about them is, is they have this little angle to them. You can really get close to the post so you don't have a lot of string hanging off to stab you and that hurts, okay? So any kind of nips that you can use once your, all your strings are off, you're gonna need some fretboard sauce and a rag, okay? Now, the sauce that I love for all of my instruments is 100% um, natural oils. So there's no weird stuff in here, no wax. And the best part about it is it smells like lemons because <laughs> there's some lemon oil in there. But this is what I use. Um, I'll have links for this stuff below. You do not have to uh, go through my links but if you do go through my links, it gives me a small kickback and I send that money to charity. So, uh, this is what I love for my fretboard sauce. You need a rag, uh, preferably something that won't leave um, behind those little doohickeys. And then you need a new set of strings. This is my string of choice. It's cheap. It's like four bucks or four fifty, something like that. They're down below too. So let's get to this. So I'm going to move the camera now and we'll get into this. All right, so the first step is to loosen our strings a little bit. And the reason, there's a reason for that, because if I were to just come in here and cut these right now, boom, there's a lot of tension on them and it'll go flying and that's not what we want. So let's loosen them up some, all of them. Okay, sounds lovely. All right, they're good and loose. Now it's time to nip away, all right? So you can nip these anywhere you want. Just pick somewhere, they're still flying. But here's what I do, okay? I hold on to the side that's at the end of my dulcimer. This side up here is gonna stay there because it's wrapped around. This is the side back here that might fly off. So that's the side we hold, okay? And you just cut them all three so that nothing goes flying off the back. And then you can just grab it and pull it off of the back. Okay, and there's my string. Now I'm just gonna wind them up. That way they don't go flying off into the world and get in somebody's foot eventually, okay? Cause that always happens, I'm telling you. I've done this a million times. If you have that little tiny piece of string that you get cut off, oh my Lord, that will end up causing someone to bleed. And <laughs> we don't want that. Okay, so we've cut that. Now we come up here to the front and we just grab one, pull the other ones out of the way. We just grab one and we unwind it. Just a quick little process there. And I go ahead and hold the other one so nothing's flying all over the place, right? All right. Now we take this in and we do the same thing. We're just keeping our stuff neat so it doesn't go all flying everywhere, right? All right, and then we're gonna throw those away. And you can always tell when it's time to change the strings if they start looking dirty. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but they get dirty from your oils in your fingers. Um, and there are products you can use and things you can do to wipe off your strings every time you play, but I don't do that. I play a lot, okay? Now, you're gonna, I'm gonna show you something. Um, I have a floating nut and bridge, which is very cool. It means that I can at any time change the action height. Uh, I can add another notch if I wanna add that other melody string. I can do all sorts of different stuff. And this is one of the benefits of folk craft. You get that nut that's not attached there it's floating so that's nice but the bridge also floats 
on a folk craft too. So you got to hold on to those if you're going to be doing something like I'm doing. Now, I don't know if it's going to show you or not. Oh yeah, I can see it. Look at all that grunge. <laughs> There's grunge and dust and dirt everywhere because I hang mine up on the wall. I don't, I don't put it up in a case all the time. So now we're going to clean everything real nice. And the first thing you're going to do is just wipe everything down with your rag before you put any oils or anything like that on it. Okay. Just wipe it all down and uh, get in here next to each fret real quick so that you don't have, I'm going to have to show you my clock. Maybe I'll put it at the end of the video. My husband and I just celebrated our 29th wedding anniversary. Yes, 29. And yes, I was a baby basically when we got married. But, um, so we celebrated our 29th wedding anniversary. Wipe it all, get it all, all the dust off of there. And we have always wanted one of these clocks. And we finally this year went ahead and did it. Um, it's got the Westminster chimes and it's a wind up clock. So you have to wind it every week and it's just glorious. We love it so. I'll give you a picture of it at the end here or pop one up here somewhere. But, okay, so we just wipe all the dust off basically, right? Now it's time for the sauce. Okay, now with this sauce, we use it very sparingly. I've had this for a couple years now and I'm not even, I'm down this far <laughs> from full, okay? So you don't, you don't use a lot of this. This oil goes a long way. So I'm just gonna remove that nut to make it so it don't go flying, but. So we're just using a small amount, all right? So we come in here and maybe put, that's kind of a big fret. So we'll put a couple of dots there. And we just rub that around and get up by the fret really good too, because that area tends to um, collect your oils and stuff, all right? So you can see a difference there where I've, where I've oiled and that's all it takes. So I'll, I'll put usually one tiny little small drip per fret on these bigger frets. Now this one I did too. So I'll just come in there, put a, put a little, and I'm just talking about, I hope you can see that the tiniest little dot. I mean, this little dot is not even going to run. It's so, it's not a big, huge drop. Okay. So a small little amount there. I hope you got you a cup of coffee or something because I'm not going to fast forward all this. I'm just going to chat with you while I'm doing it, but you're just going to oil it. And on the bigger frets, you might need two little dots. So you're just going to get everything and don't worry about, um, whatever kind of material that you have on your fretboard. It's some sort of wood or even if it's micarta, you can still use this oil on it. It is perfectly safe. I said oil. It's it's natural oil, but um, there's no waxes or anything like that, as I said. Oh, and you get that beautiful lemon smell, which y'all know I like lemons. I like lemon stuff and lemon scents and all that good stuff. So as we get in here into these smaller frets, you're going to be a little more sparing with your sauce okay but you're still gonna put some tiny i'm putting the tiniest amount here you guys but um and then you're, you're just gonna go this direction back and forth against your frets to get all the grunge out of there and uh and such as that okay and um now once it's been on a few minutes um and you're just going to do your fretboard here. You don't need to be putting oil on the top or the sides of the back or anything like that. Um, if you have a good finish on your dulcimer, this is a very light finish and it's hand rubbed out. Um, so it's probably never going to need to be, uh, conditioned or anything like that, unless it were to get very dirty. Now I'm going to come back and just wipe off again with the clean part of the rag not the oily part that i just did okay and i'm just going to come back and wipe off and what that's doing is removing any excess 
oil, okay? Any excess, we don't want there to be very much at all, okay? So this just goes ahead and removes, and I even got a cleaner part again. It just removes any excess oil that we happen to get on there, okay? So we just remove that. Okay, now I'm gonna get another clean part of the rag and I'm just gonna, once more, I'm gonna wipe at the fret just to make sure I don't have any oils hanging out. And that's because of our strings. Our strings are gonna be touching the frets, right? So we don't wanna have any oil or anything on top of the frets. All right, now it's time to put new strings on. All right. I'm gonna put my nut back in. And one thing you gotta pay attention to if, if you have this removable nut floating, most nuts are just put on with one little dab of glue. So they're, it's not too hard to change them usually uh, if you need to change things. But we wanna make sure we put the correct side in, okay? And if you've got, well, we wanna put the correct side in. So what you're gonna see is usually the side with the base string or fatter string, let's see if I can get that to where you can see it, will be higher on your nut than your tiny strings. Your smaller strings will go deeper into the nut. And that's so that that base string is held up higher off the fretboard. So when it vibrates as you're playing it, it's not gonna be hitting any frets, okay? So now we get our new pack of strings. Let me close my sauce up. And look, I cannot tell you enough good about this stuff. It's only like 12 or 13 bucks on Amazon. Um, this stuff is awesome, okay? I've used it on every instrument I had, every kind of wood, fretboard. Um, it is awesome stuff. All right, so let's get into our strings. Now, is a 12 gauge on the melody string or strings, a 14 on the middle, and a 22 on the outside. Now, on the bass, I am actually gonna get some heavier string. So, we get our string package open, and then what you'll see is if you get these D'Addario ones, you'll see that they're they're already labeled for you real nicely. So you've got your colors here. If you can't tell by the just the size of it, what you do is you look in your case there and it tells you. Silver is your first string and it tells you right there on that. So your first string means your melody string or, or the smallest gauge. So that's the silver, and I can tell, and you can too if you've got decent eyesight and don't need glasses too bad, but <laughs> uh, the middle is purple, and then the wound string is going to be our bass string, and that's green. All right, so I'm going to put the bass string on first. So I'm going to take my green little thingy here, and I'm going to undo it a couple times until it will just pop open for me, okay? Then I'm gonna just remove my little tab there. All right, now, this is a loop end, and I went, I originally had on here a ball end, a ball end, okay? So you need to see what you've got and what um, you will be able to use, in other words, on your dulcimer. My dulcimer here just has pins sticking up. So I could use loops or balls either way. Um, but it's just going to depend on how you have it. Now, I've seen some dulcimers where it will come through the back and actually be a tunneled hole that comes out. And for that, you'd want to use a ball end, okay? Or if you've got a huge angle, like coming off the end... You might want to use a ball in for that just to give you a little more stability there. And let me show you one more thing before I put this string on. A cool thing that Folkcraft does that I've noticed that is really cool is they put a notch 
You see that notch? On the end of your nut and your bridge, that is the base side. So that you don't even have to think about what I was talking about before. Uh, so that's pretty handy. And you can see it on the bridge side. Same, same thing. Very cool. So they've thought of everything there at Folkcraft. And you guys, you know I love Folkcraft. I just really like their products. And those who have a Folkcraft dulcimer, I'm sure they will attest to the same thing. Okay, so now we come down and we hook it on the back and then we hold it with our right hand taut, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you a little trick that I learned. Um, I learned this from Mr. Jerry Rosa of Rosa String Works on a video. And I've tried it and it works and it's so awesome. And I've been changing strings all these years and I feel kind of dumb about it, but <laughs> all right. So the first thing to remember here, I've got it tight behind me. The first thing to remember is that we always wanna wrap it around the inside of the post, okay? On both sides. So the string comes to the inside and then wraps around to the outside, okay? Same thing with over here. The string is gonna come to the inside of the post and wrap around, okay? So on, on the base side, it's gonna wrap clockwise. And on the uh, melody string side, it's gonna wrap counterclockwise, okay? So if you just think about that, the strings always go to the inside and then around, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Now this is a cool trick. Um, instead of putting it through the, the hole right now, we're gonna wrap it. So I've got it taut here, and I'm gonna just put my finger down right here, okay? And I've got it taut back here. I mean, it's, it's just, it's not, I mean, it's loose, but I've got it pulled taut, all right? So then I'm gonna wrap it around once, and I'm gonna wrap it around again, okay? And then I'm gonna release that hand and just take my thumb and push down my two uh, winds there. All right, and you can go again if you'd like. And then I'm gonna put it through the hole. So this is completely different than anything I ever used to do. And it's so awesome. It makes it so easy. You don't even need a string winder, which I don't use them things anyway, but then you pull it tight, all right? And then I'm just gonna start winding. <coughs> and we wanna wind it in the direction that we just did. So we wanna make that post move clockwise, okay? So start winding it and you'll see. And then whatever direction you're winding it here on this side, it's usually gonna be the opposite over here. And that's a general rule, but it's not always the case. Depends on your maker of your dulcimer and all that good stuff. All right, so. You can see how quick and amazingly easy that was right there. Okay, now, before we cut this, all right, you wanna check, you wanna look down and make sure you've got it in at the back properly and that you've got it in at the front properly, okay? And we've got it tight enough that we can cut now. Here's another option if you're unsure or if you just like the look of it. You can coil these things up a few times. A lot of people like this look. I've never been too crazy about it, but I like more of the clean look. But you can uh, wrap it around a few times in a little small circle and then pull it. Ugh. See, I can't even do it. I'm trying to do it. Um but you just wrap it around a few times and then put it through your loop there. And I just don't like it, but some people do, I said. And we'll put it through again. You wanna put it through at least a couple times. And then we cut. And you have this little, you end up with this little decorative, decorative little loop thing going on. Now, again, I said I didn't like that. Oh, now you get to hear my clock in all its glory. Listen to this. While I cut this ugly thing off.
Okay, so I cut that off, as you can see there, and there we go. I've got my string on. Thank you, Mr. Rosa. That was a beautiful tip. All right, so now I'm heading over to my middle string, and I'll show you this again, because I tell you, this has changed the way I'm going to be changing strings forever, because it's so simple. Oh, my goodness. I really wish I'd have come across that years and years ago. All right, so for our middle string, we're going to put on our middle string now. Now, if, you, if you're going to be putting on four strings, your middle string is going to go right there, all right? But I'm only going to be putting on three because I prefer to play it that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it on here so that gives me two tuners on the same side when I'm tuning, all right? So again, we come to the back, place it where it goes, put it on the bridge, get it with one hand, move our dulcimer, put your finger down, come on back, and just bring it up to where it's not going to go flying off back here, okay? And then we're going to do that same process, and this time, let me see if I can get you um, a little bit closer. All right, so I've, I've gotten you a little bit closer. Let me go back. All right, so we get it in at the front and at the back, and we just put our finger here, okay, to hold it down. Now, as I said, you'd normally put it here if you're going to put in two strings, but I'm just going to be putting it over here. So what we do is we don't go through the loop first. We're just going to pull tight, and I'm going to bring it back up here. Then I'm going to wrap, and, and we always wrap from the inside out and around, okay? Inside, out, and around, okay? So this is counterclockwise on these. So this time, I'm gonna do four and give myself some good meat there. Then I come over here and I'm just gonna press that down and hold it. Um, it's staying there pretty well. So I'm gonna come back and place and put it through the hole this time and just pull it tight. All right. Pull it tight. Okay. And we are done. All right. You have some extra string there and we've not had to wind a million times. Such a beautiful, glorious idea. All right. So then we just tighten it up enough to where we can cut off our excess and you'll see my bridge floating around. That's okay. Now we get our nips and we nip her off. And then we always want to loop this up so we don't end up hurting somebody, right? I also have little critters running around in here, dogs and cats. So I don't want to hurt them either because that is painful. Okay, I'm going to leave it in tight here so that you can see this again. Now, one neat thing about only using um, three strings is you get a lot of extra strings <laughs> if you do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that one I'm going to use into my lap. Then I'm going to take this other one, the extra one. I'm going to loop it back up. Whoops. Sometimes that happens. So I'm going to loop that back up and um, save it. Because you never know when you're going to break a string. It's always good to have extra strings. And believe you me, I have a lot of instruments. So, I save the strings, okay? And we just get it looped up nice and tight. And then we're going to save that, okay? All right, for our last string, I'm not going to show you the back. You know what to do at the back. Put it on the loop. Bring it up the fretboard. I'm going to leave this in tight for you. And then we put that into our... Uh, nut and we just grasp it there again and then we're going to bring that string which way inside and then around outside okay so it's always inside all your strings go inside of those tuner pegs I'm going to actually grasp it there now I'm going to wind it around the outside counterclockwise now and I'm going to do four one two three 
four. And you have to keep it tight while you're doing this or it's going to want to fly up. And you just do that with a, a little bit of practice, you'll be able to do it. Okay, then I've got to find my little hole, and I see it, and I'm pulling tight. I'm keeping it tight the whole time. And, oh, sometimes I need my glasses. Find my little hole there, and I keep it tight as I'm pulling it through. Okay. As it gets smaller, I'm keeping that tight there. And I'll just hold it down on the fretboard there and then pull tight, okay? And we are done, holy cow, that is so cool. Okay, so now we just go tight. As this tightens up, my nut will move into place. It's wanting to float a little more. Okay, so now we just nip the last string. And another thing, if you use three strings, look at all the time you save. <laughs> Oh, I'm silly, I know. Okay. And then last but not least, we... I'm fixing to move the camera back. And uh, I'm going to turn it off for a second and tune her up. And then we'll play a tune. All right, now we are in tune. I have slowly brought it up. There's my bass, D. My middle, A. And my melody D. Now, okay, I'm gonna play a little tune for you in a second, but realize that uh, new strings stretch a bit, so you'll have to tune these a couple times. Of course, every time you start to play, you need to be tuning, but they will stretch a little bit and you'll have a farther range to tune. But okay, let's play a little tune. I will be doing a lesson on this tune coming up, but this is John Stinson's number two. All right, for a little tune here, I'm going to do a little experiment. I'm going to play you on a couple of different picks so you can hear a different sound. This is a real light, like I'd call this a very thin pick. Here is a really thick Tortex. I can't even bend it. So I'll just let you hear the differences there. Of the pick clack, the tone, everything. Okay, here we go. Here we go. pick the really thin pick and I only went through the A part once and the B part once I know I'll get comments on that I did that on purpose okay now here comes a super thin thick pick So it sounds a lot different. There's different pick noise. There's different tone coming from the dulcimer, but this is a string change video. So what am I doing? Anyway, all right, let me move this camera and talk to you for just a second. All right, so we went through changing our strings. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you uh, enjoyed my little chatter there as well. But um, I hope also that you'll try out this new method of putting the strings on. It is so much easier than putting it on the old way and then winding for 10 years. Um, really, this is a lot easier. Thank you, Jerry, for that tip. It's amazing. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of it. And before I go, I always wanna remind you that Jesus loves you. Bye-bye, y'all. <laughs>